Trade with Europe, that's good. But how much the European Union actually increases trade with Europe, I don't know. But I do know that the EU is a shrinking part of the world economy. And I definitely know that people like me find it more difficult to get proper jobs in the EU. Look at Euroland. Over half the young people in Spain have no job at all. In France, over a quarter of young people have no work. And in Greece, over two thirds of young people are unemployed. And yet we hear some politicians, officials and EU campaign groups like BIE claim that three and a half million jobs in the UK depend on our membership of the EU. Has the EU really created and sustained employment for three and a half million people, real people, not just bureaucrats? That would make membership pretty important. But what about my job? I don't have a proper job. My job has never been created. I have a graphic design degree and I keep on top of my subjects and prepare for work and look for work, but there's simply not the demand for new graduate labour. The EU is a shrinking economic area. Now the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, are all growing, as is much of the Commonwealth and even Sub-Saharan Africa. For half a century, it's been Britain's policy to look to Europe and not pay enough attention to the rest of the world. How many jobs were never created because of this neglect? How many opportunities lost? To what extent is this half century of backing the wrong horse responsible for people like me having no future? They're calling us a lost generation. Three and a half million people in this country have a job because of the EU. Well, let's see about that. And how many people don't have a job because of the EU? Let's go to London and talk to some people. Here we are at Folkestone Central train station, about to get on the train to go to London. Let's talk to Tim Congdon, who's Professor of Economics at Cardiff Business School and Cass Business School in the city, who's also a member of the Treasury Panel for Independent Forecasters, the so-called wise men. He's pretty much Britain's leading monetarist and a bit of a Eurosceptic. sometimes claimed that uh, three and a half million jobs depend on our membership of the European Union. Let's get this straight. It may be true that about three and a half million jobs are involved in producing products and services that are exported to the European Union. Fair enough. They depend on trade with the European Union. We have a relatively free world trading environment already. China is a bigger exporter to the European Union than we are. We leave the European Union, we still can sell to our European friends and neighbours. Those three and a half billion jobs just go on as today. It's not like everything's been made rosy and everyone has a job and it's as if three million could be lost. There are way more than that without a job now. Hi, we're at the Rainbow Centre and it's locally run by churches of all denominations. And if you're going through a phase in your life where things are a bit rough, then this is the place for you. Uh, this is John Wilson, and uh, he's the man in charge. Just tell us what you do. Yeah, certainly in the area of Kent that we're based, we've seen a 50% increase in people accessing the service that we run year on year. Uh, and e even in July, we had over 500 visits to the centre um, in one month, which is the highest ever that we've seen. And uh, what we're finding is that actually people... Uh, are coming to us uh, and particularly if they've suddenly become made redundant uh, and become unemployed that they uh, often need um, uh, need a stopgap because it takes a while for their benefits to kick in and uh, quite often we have people that are very distressed coming to us and uh, uh, and they have just got no food to feed their families uh, whilst they're waiting for money to come through um, the benefits agency so it's quite uh, quite a scary and isolating place I think for people that are in that situation and as I say we, we see people from all walks of life and uh, people often think there's certain types of people that are collecting benefits but uh, we just see so many different people that come to us so 
uh, that's pretty much uh, sort of an increase in demand that we've seen recently. Hi, this is Roy Broomfield and he's the director of the Better Off Out campaign. Now, there's a lot of people that are convinced that the EU does help reduce unemployment because they fund schemes that help people who are out of work. Now, Tim Congdon far from agrees with this. And he's right to disagree because bureaucrats don't create jobs. Businessmen do. And these schemes are designed by bureaucrats in a foreign land that don't know what's happening in local businesses, in local environments, in the local economy. And so these schemes do not help people across the country, across the United Kingdom, to have the skills to uh, be able to present themselves to businesses that do need specific skills and ultimately know what their business is about. Ultimately, this sort of thing is being created from Brussels, not from the locality. Businessmen know what they want, not a bureaucrat for Brussels. Basically, these schemes are taking money out of the economy because it's profitable businesses and businessmen who are paying for these sort of schemes to be had. And it's, taking, it's a cost on them to provide what is effectively an ineffective scheme uh, to another area of the economy and ultimately not benefit their business, their locality, and also not benefit the people who are trying to get the jobs in the first place. Hi there, my name's Jonathan. I was uh, made unemployed um, about three months ago when uh, my company moved up to the north of London. Um, being someone who lives in Kent, it, it was basically over five hours of travel a day. Um, so I found myself unemployed. Um, I proceeded to apply for about 30 jobs um, and sent in applications to those companies um, with without receiving um, very very many responses at all. I, um, I would send in an application and no one would even reply to that application. I felt um, I didn't know what to do, a big sense of despair really, uh, going to bed thinking how am I going to pay the bills. Yeah my name's Helen and um, I'm, I'm employed and live in Folkestone. Yeah I've been fortunate that I've, I've had jobs um, but there isn't the career, I've got a business management degree, I don't feel like I'm doing much with it um, and you hear it all around the country that young people go get a degree at university but then they can't do anything with it at the end and I just think um, if there's a better economy with, with companies then um, there'd be more choice for career and people could do what they want, what they enjoy, what they're good at and that's the main thing and people want to work in what they enjoy. Um, it's better for business, better for the companies rather than just doing what you have to do, which people do because we need money. Um, but in terms of enjoying what you do, um, yeah, it's very difficult at the moment. Suppose we leave the European Union. The question is, can we then sell things to our European neighbours? The answer is, of course we can. Let's just be clear, at the moment, China does not belong to the European Union. And China sells more products to the European Union than Britain does. Okay, So we don't need to belong to the European Union in order to sell products and services to our European neighbours and friends. Surely it's an economic advantage to be traded in with such a big group, a rich group? Well, really the European Union isn't really a rich group anymore. It has massive unemployment problems. The dull queues are getting longer and longer. The EU, the Eurozone countries in particular, it seems like they're permanently stuck in recession. So really with massively high unemployment, their economic activity is just declining and declining. And there's not really much opportunities there for us anymore. It is really a very disappointing situation that's happening in the EU when you've got in southern Europe as many as um, one in four unemployed. So even so, they're still like by world standards relatively rich. So is it not a good idea to be trading with them? Well, we can always trade with other businesses and people and countries in the European Union, even if we're outside of the EU. Trade will always continue. It's as in 
our interest as, as just as much as it's in their interests to keep trading. But we can do that from outside the EU. We can remain members of the European Economic Area, which allows for the free movement of goods and capital, uh, services and labour. And of course we can join the European Free Trade Association, so we don't actually have to be part of the political bloc to continue trading with other EU countries. So we'd actually perhaps have an advantage because we wouldn't be burdened with all the costs that the EU is putting on this country, which really isn't helping our economy either. So I see we're struggling a bit here in Europe. Are there lots of other opportunities out in the rest of the world that we could be part of that we're missing out on? And if so, like in reality, how can we actually do that? Can we just easily start trading with all these other places? Yes, we can. You're absolutely right. There's amazing opportunities for Britain around the world. The, the growing economies in the, on the globe are in North America, South America, Southeast Asia. There are wonderful opportunities there. Look at the growth in China and India and then other nations as well, even Indonesia and Australia. There's so many good opportunities for Britain, but at the moment, being in the EU, we don't have a seat on the WTO, that the World Trade Organization. Our trade deals are made by the EU. If we were outside the EU, we could still continue trading with other EU nations, but we could explore these other op wonderful opportunities that exist in this global world. And of course, being in the EU, we ca can't now make our own uh, bilateral investment treaties. Outside, we would be able to have our sovereignty, our ability to form the links that best suited us, whilst of course continuing to trade on the continent. So. Really, we should be exploring the rest of the world, which has so much to offer us. Over the next 25, 50 years, Europe's importance in the world is going to fall very sharply. Our trade with nations outside the European Union is going to expand enormously in relative importance. We therefore should be thinking hard about how to organize our international relations for that kind of world in which the European Union is not very important. We should not be trying to base our entire future on our relationship with the European Union. We can leave the European Union and prosper and flourish in the 21st century. and academic world there's a general opinion that not only does the EU not create jobs or that jobs depend on the EU but that actually the EU and the government style that goes along with it does create unemployment and it does because the EU affects so much regulation and ties businesses in so much red tape that they are unable to employ the people that they might otherwise employ because they're less profitable ultimately regulation is a cost and businesses need to be free of this cost to get profit and to employ people and grow their business. At present, all of our economy, all 100% of the economy, is subject to the rules and regulations of the European Union. But we only sell products and services to the European Union equal to about 14, 13, 14% of our national output. The rules and regulations of the European Union close small businesses, they destroy jobs, they harm our economy. Yes, we do want access to the single market for that 13-14% of the economy, but we leave the European Union, we can have our own rules, regulations, English law, Scottish law and so on, for the remaining 86-87% of the economy. That 86-87% of the economy is then liberated from all the rules and regulations that damage, at the moment, our entire economy because we belong to the European Union. So everyone's come out of the great economic turmoil that the world's seen in recent years, except for the EU. Why is that? Well, regulation. Regulation, cost, inefficiency. And this regulation, again, is not just made for the UK. It's a standard regulation made for 28 nations across the European Union, which don't have the same economy, don't have the same structure, don't have the same skill base, and are completely different and individual entities in themselves. So regulation, costs and inefficiency 
are holding not just the UK but the European Union back. Some people believe that the EU is not democratic but it's run by big businesses. If that's true then surely the EU would be good for the economy? Well the European Union is good for big business in a way that it creates extra regulation and regulation is big business's friend. It is not however the friend of small business that is trying to keep down its cost base, trying to employ more people, trying to get growth in their business and drive a, a different sort of economy home to create a different sort of economy and at the Better Off Out campaign we believe in free markets and free markets come with limited regulation and allow for the free movement of people and goods and services around not just the European Union but the world. So your restaurants employ a lot of people and service business like yours do, but what would you say the main obstacles are if you wanted to employ more people? Uh, the bu bureaucracy of actually employing uh, people is so difficult now because of the, um, the leave entitlement, the, uh, the, even when it comes down to disciplinaries, trying to get rid of people with the written warnings, the verbal warnings. Uh, I had a, uh, a situation where it cost me three and a half thousand pounds to actually get rid of somebody that I caught stealing. The rules and regulations of actually employing people now, uh, it's actually gone too far the other way now where the employer is suffering, um, not the employee. The, the employee gets all the rights, the employer has nothing. A friend of mine who started a business and he says that the, the costs of him starting a business are so prohibitively high for him to open a small low budget cafe and to have music for his customers. He has to pay a thousand pounds a year for a music license and another license for this, another license for that, another license for something else. So his costs are so high he daren't take on a full-time female member of staff because he knows immediately should she become pregnant he is liable for that cost. In the last year I've gone from company to company because I was made redundant in August 2012. Um, we were given no redundancy money and I've gone from job to job um, with no permanent contracts. It's very difficult to find full-time work in this day and age because a lot of companies are only handing out 0% contracts um, and you've got no certainty of what hours you might get next week. Um, you know, and also you've gone from say maybe eight pound pay down to what just six pounds fifty um, it's a big drop in in wages as well trying to get out there and put your foot in the door uh, bills are getting higher and we're not able to pay for them it's uh, it's really difficult so there's a number of foreign businesses who say that unless you know we continue to be involved in the EU then they're going to pull out of of the UK uh, what happens if that happens well I very much doubt that they will pull out of the UK because they've said it all before. In the discussions over the Euro, many of these companies, Honda, Nissan, they all said that they'd scale down their operations if the UK didn't join the Euro. In fact, they've scaled up their operations in light of us keeping the pound. And so with a more competitive economy, it would be in their interests to stick around. And that competitiveness will come when we repeal the legislation from the European Union. We will, outside the European Union, be able to repeal that and ultimately create a more competitive economy for UK businesses and businesses abroad. So is there not the possibility that our government could pull out of the EU and then like, not repeal these regulations? Um, what, what would happen then? Well, ultimately it comes down to a democratic argument because the discussions will come back to the United Kingdom. It would be the United Kingdom's members of Parliament and the people of Britain that will be informing the process, making the decisions, not someone in Brussels or Strasbourg or a collective body of nations over there 
that don't represent the best interests of the United Kingdom. Ultimately, that is a democratic argument. Uh, we have the choice if we're outside the European Union, inside the European Union, we don't. Yeah, so I've heard um, that kind of argument before and it all sounds really rational. Uh, but what if the EU does react in an irrational and aggressive way, which is maybe what the Liberal Democrats imply? Well, we buy more stuff from the European Union than we sell to the European Union. Countries around the EU depend on trade with the UK more than we depend on trade with countries around the European Union. And so, ultimately, with this conversation, it would be in their best interests to keep us on side, keep the free movement of goods and services from the UK to their countries. And jobs depend in these countries on this trade with the United Kingdom. And to put up barriers and to be difficult will ultimately not be in their interests and actually further potentially economic distress. And there's something else. The people around Europe don't dislike the United Kingdom. They like to come here, they like to trade with the UK. Ultimately, this is about trade and not anything else. And they don't see a problem with the United Kingdom outside the European Union. If the UK is uh, amenable, if the UK is friendly towards the people and the countries in the European Union. We get this question about the single market. If we leave the European Union, I'll be cut out of the single market. The single market means a whole mass of rules and regulations. That's really what it means. If British companies sell products, services and so on in China, they must comply with Chinese rules and regulations. If they sell things in the United States, they must comply with American rules and regulations. Okay, but they still can sell products to China and America, um, even though we don't have some special a European Union, some American Union or Chinese Union with these other countries. We're outside the EU. Of course companies must comply with the regulations involved with exporting to the European Union, but that's all and life would go on. Just as we don't need to be a state in the, in the United States of America to sell to America, we do not need to be a state in the United States of Europe to sell to Europe. Um, that is one of the key points in this whole argument. I think um, there's a lot of unemployment already and um, the EU makes it a lot easier for people um, who have been brought up in other countries to come over and take jobs when people who have been born and brought up in this country are unemployed and desperately looking for work, so I don't think it helps at all. In, in 2003, Tony Blair, uh, the Labour Prime Minister, decided that um, the new members of the European Union, eight mostly East European countries, um, should become full members as far as we were concerned in the sense that if you were Polish or Estonian or whatever you could live and work in the United Kingdom. So members of the European Union we couldn't stop these people coming in. Since the start of 2004 the employment of British born people in Britain has gone down Okay, I'm just looking at this document here where I've gone through these figures. The employment of foreign-born people has gone up by 1.8 million. Okay, roughly half of these people are from Eastern Europe. I haven't proved beyond any sort of final, that I haven't finally proved that those people coming in to take jobs in our country meant fewer jobs British born people but it's pretty likely isn't it and let's be clear in particular that the employment prospects for young people have deteriorated markedly in the last 10 years in this sense our membership of the European Union has destroyed British jobs and we must consider the problem of migration from both ends as Demetrius says later 
economies are drained of their best, most energetic and well-trained people. There's fewer people to provide vital services there and there's a shrinking tax base. Depopulation in some places, such as rural Latvia, is as severe as the Black Death in the Middle Ages. Whole counties have only a few old people living there. So what we have ended up with is 30% uh, unemployment in Greece, the highest in the European Union, and 75% unemployment among the young, again the highest in the European Union. Our young are leaving and going to other, other countries to, to work, and Greece is losing you know, its youngest and best talent as a result. I remember, um, I don't know, probably my parents' generation saying a long time ago people could just pick and choose. My aunt um, wanted to leave a job, went to another and got it straight away and that just does not happen in Britain anymore. It's very hard. We should not be focusing on the most vulnerable people in society, the unemployed. If a chap cannot get a job, either through a lack of skills or otherwise, and there's evidence that he's tried, we shouldn't be focusing on him, we should be focusing on the employers creating more abundance, creating more abundance in their own personal economy of their business so that they can take a risk and take on more staff. And that's not happening at the moment. When you have businesses that are frightened to make economic decisions because money is in such short supply, and when you have employers that dare not take risks, you are going to have an increasing number of unemployed persons. The only way to address the issue is one, to support wholeheartedly entrepreneurship and, true, and two, address the issues of export. Why are we not exporting? What are the barriers? How can we become global marketeers on a global platform these things are important and they're not being addressed. Instead of this global view and removing obstacles for entrepreneurs, we've been obsessed with this ideology of building Europe and this looks responsible for a lot of our long-term problems. European think tanks said that Greeks, uh, Greek rates of only occupancy are abnormally high. So they have, made, they have imposed ridiculous, ridiculous tax on property including first homes. And that, combined with ever-shrinking incomes, will mean people have to effectively let the Indian Revenue confiscate their house because they can't um, pay the taxes on it. So what you have here is people's houses across the country will be confiscated by the state to support European banks. Yeah, I wish things never come to this state in this country, uh, but um, when your country has been taken away from you, when there's no law, when the constitution and democracy has been take, uh, taken away from you, and when you're no longer a sovereign country but you're under occupation legally, there's no place for right and left. People from all political backgrounds should unite to claim back their country and their democracy. Uh, and that's what the PAM is about to claim back our country, to claim back, uh, claim back our democracy, leave the Euro and the European Union, um, have our own currency, and also correct the injustice with the, with the current debt, you know, and write it, and write it off, because we had paid it, paid it in the past. So what did the Greeks do to deserve this punishment? They lost their savings, their livelihoods, and even their houses have been confiscated if they can't pay the new taxes. When they were told that everything was all right, it depended on the magic of the EU. They believed what their politicians told them. So when they were told it was okay to borrow, they borrowed. When they were told it was okay to spend and buy, they spent and bought, but they should have questioned it. They didn't question it because they were told that if they didn't go along with it, that bad things would happen. And if we're told that bad things will happen if we don't go along with it, like millions of people would lose their jobs, then maybe we should be a little bit more doubtful, just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm.